this Natural England and the RSPB are infatuated with fodder radish at the moment. <laughs> Only because it grows in most situations on poor soils, whatever the pressure is, it grows. Just be very careful how much you put in a mix. Because it, it grows so well, if you put more than half a kilo an acre in a mix, what you'll end up with is, is a big great crop of fodder radish that falls over and lodges and drags everything else down with it. Now, fodder radish is great. I mean, it does a very good job. The seed, the reason it's so popular is the seed sits in that pod right the way through the winter. And we are looking for seed longevity. And wrapped up in that nice little cocoon, that seed won't germinate or chip or come to any harm until a bird physically feeds from it. And I've been in plots where it's effectively flat as a pancake in March and it's clouds of birds in it because they're all foraging on these pods that are on the ground. So that's it when it's gone to seed, that's it when it's leafy. Um, good old mustard. And the beauty of mustard is, again, the seed sits in the pod quite a long, quite a long time through the winter very prolific so again be careful about how much mustard you put in a mix but the benefit of it is that you will get a complete varied crop so that's mustard when it's leafy and fleshy that won't stand a hard frost but actually what happens when you get that seeding early is that drops the seed and some of the some of the seed will drop and then you get a lot of young plants so you get another green layer in the bottom which is good for thrushes and blackbirds quinoa which um, everybody says oh, it looks like fat hen which is the same family, Kenopodia, uh, very, very prolific seeder. Its similarities for fat hen stop when it starts to mature. Fat hen produces a lot of small seed that drops in one hit. The beauty of quinoa is very prolific. You can get up to a ton an acre of seed from quinoa, and you see how tiny the seed is. That's a lot of seed. Uh, we tend to use a variety called the, uh, a blend called the Sandoval blend, which has got six different maturity dates. So, sort of looking across the plot, there's some sort of green and some orange and purpley ones each different color is a different variety that matures at a different stage so instead of it all dropping in one heap it drops and matures through the winter so that keeps the spread of food going buckwheat which is a very fast growing uh, quite a leafy stemmy plant it doesn't look very much but these little seeds that produces some pyramidal shaped seeds are very useful especially if you're going for a late season redrill so a lot of people will struggle this summer, this spring, we're getting crops away. And all I'd say is anybody who gets to the point where they get to June, July and their spring sown options not doing so well is use that opportunity to start again. Um, regardless of the day job and selling seed, a mix of sort of mustard, buckwheat, fodder radish, kale rape, ecolia kale, the sort of varieties that will get away quite easily from midsummer, you'll end up with a result and a certain source of bird food and you know it stops all the weeds and all the rest of it. You put some kale in it and get away then you've got the chance to keep it for the second year. There's a lot of people this year with the dry weather either didn't get round to sowing or sowed very late and we've seen the weather we've got today as an example of how good this autumn has been for getting things away. The warmth, the lack of frost has meant things have kept on growing.